Hitachi is a system that a lot of styles have. Um, it takes on a lot of different names. Uh, it can be called Methanchi, it can be called Teki. Uh, I believe that's what it was changed by Funakoshi Sensei as he took it over into Japan. And it's so prevalent, yet there's uh, a lot of things that aren't quite understood about it. And it connects to a very common saying that a kata can be a complete fighting system. Uh, it's difficult to understand that, of course, because if you look at Nahachi in a very base level style, it doesn't seem very complete at all. So, if we took, take a look at our opponent, bring Arisan in here a little closer. If we take a look at Nahachi, it's going to happen, it happens like this, it's very side to side. And if we take that literally to our partner here, you can see some of, some of the natural weaknesses of this kata, which is where some of the skepticism comes in. So if Arisan punches, I, and I move this way, You'll notice the strength of his stance, despite the fact that I blocked his shot, the strength of his stance is much more dominant than my stance. So if he were a little savvy, he could just bend his elbow, come up and give me a little shoulder bump, and move this way. And the entire Nahachi Kata relies on me moving left and right this way. So that doesn't exactly make sense, right? So he comes in and punches. So I'm going to continue moving this way in the hopes of somehow he disappears and, and I go on and and fight some other strange ninja over in that corner. So it doesn't really make sense. So we have to shift the paradigm of where that, of how this kata is happening. Okay, and once we do that, we can start to see how this becomes a little more complete. So when Eric comes in with that punch, right, instead of staying right here, as the kata tells us specifically to do, what we need to do, right, he comes in, we need to shift it a little bit more, okay? You notice I took a, four, a bit of a 45 angle, okay? And my technique is exactly the same. And if he takes a step back, right, you'll notice my hands end up in this position. This is a very common Nahachi technique. So we have boom, boom, and then our back fist technique there. So you need to first try to break out of that side to side, and you can start utilizing the strength. And this takes us to another very common misconception about karate, is that it occurs in a distance. Okay. So if Erisan kicks me here, right, and then punches me as well, right, okay, that's where a lot of this takes place in our sparring. But what Nahachi tells us to do is it tells us not to be afraid to go in a little closer, okay, as opposed to staying out of that distance. When Erisan comes in with this technique, right, what I can do is I can move in a little tighter this way, okay, and you'll notice I'm switching my stance, I'm hitting that Nahachi, but I'm not being slavish to it. I can also move through it, okay? And instead of just using it as a stance, I can also use it as, as an unbalancing point. So, when using the Hachi, we learn to shift our bodies off on the 45 and utilize some of that distance this way. And another thing is, when people do their Nahachi Kata, it tends to be very stiff. So we're here, we move here, 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 however your Nahachi tends to go. Nidan, which is more here, here, this way. We tend to do it very one to two to three to four. But when you're actually trying to use it in application, you loosen it up a little bit. You, you keep it a little more floaty. So when he comes in again, right, I can move, and then he comes in and hits me again. I can keep moving here, this way. I can come up and down, utilizing the techniques high, low, in, out. So in that way, what Nahachi's really teaching us is the core concepts that make attacking work. So if you guys are fans of uh, Sistema and wave punching and things of that nature, you're going to see that, and it's all the way back in our kata as well. So Eric moves in a little closer. Come in, just kind of stand like this. So you'll see some guys flatten other guys when they do their, their wave punching like this, in this fashion. That's really neat, and I like it a lot. But it's also in our kata, which is great. It's good for us karate folk. So when he's coming in with that punch, we can shift, and we can let that happen, and that moves right out of our kata. But the problem is, if you do it at a very base level, it kind of looks like this. So you have that. It doesn't, it's, you know, it's not nearly the same as what those guys are doing when they're crushing other guys. So it, you have to learn to let your body move and shift into your striking, and even though you're, you're practicing this at a base level, it needs to become loose to tight all in one motion, and leave the impact in your partner. So in order to demonstrate how Nahachi can be used with a little bit more live, uh, liveliness, I'm going to let Eric come in and do any kind of attacks he wants, okay? And I'm just going to try to move, and I'm going to try to use the concepts of Nahachi to get out of the way and try to hit him in, in return a little bit, okay? At, at your leisure.
notice that it wasn't as pretty as your cat is going to be, but what you're doing is you're letting it come low high, low high. Let a joint lock happen, come back across, make a strike. So uh, practice your nahachi a little bit and have some fun with it. Thank you.